Although this is an individual reading for Jonah, this is a collective reading for you to understand how your body, your spirit operates, how it can grow, and how your original ability had the ability to travel and to talk to animals and plants and gods and different portals and realities, and we lost that ability. Welcome to The Looking Glass. My name is Mary Moses. I do an ancient art technique known as scrying. And when you are into scrying or alchemy, you get into symbology. Symbology is a communication of your higher self to you. And your higher self is always a mirror of the higher worlds. Jonah, let's focus at 11 o'clock where someone is seated on a throne. And above the throne is a rainbow with clouds. And sometimes I could use common sense when it comes to understanding these clouds, but it's a rainbow bridge that takes your mind from one place to another. However, spirit told me to tell you that you come from originally the blueprint of your soul comes from Peru because the day after I did your art, I watched this video. The Chachapoya who built their world up here in the clouds that remains hidden, hidden in the whispers of these rocks. You know, there's not even a a written record that remains by their own people. Somewhere in the vast cloud forest must be the remains of a lost Chachapoya world. That is what I hope to find. To have confidence that this is the communication for you, I was looking for other symbologies that would carbon copy or parallel with the Chichapoya from Peru. And these are called cloud people. They lived in the mountains and they lived with the clouds. And I noticed you had a couple of symbols that looks a lot like the symbols that they used and that they have carved on stone. So they're called the Peru's Mysterious Cloud Warriors. Notice the face on these statues that looks like eyes with rabbit ears. And the rabbit ears are either straight up or they're split. And so when you look at these faces on the side of the mountains in Peru, if you look very closely, you'll see the rabbit facing different directions. The ears will be split or they will be side by side like two towers. And it's a communication about our abilities as a human or what we used to have, the ability to fly, go through portals, and see many things. So look at this piece of yours, that face with the rabbit ears. And you have one eye in that reality, which is Peru. And in that, that statue, that's where they put the deceased. It's as if it's saying that you had a soul in that statue. And one of your souls went into the mind of a reptilian. Now, this is a statue in Peru. And notice the two towers is below the chin if you turn it upside down. Now, look at the animals. And the wall behind the statue has five lines coming from like hair blowing and This is what you have in your piece next to that heart and under the letter T and the angel. It seems like these cloud warriors knew about how our soul had the ability to travel. And if our soul gets trapped, then we have to find the formula for escaping. Now look at this statue in Peru. It's a face on a mandala or a amulet, but it looks like the letter T. And you have an amulet in your piece that makes 1111, but you also have that letter T in your piece that is describing like a face. So that letter T is next to the face and that statue has three feathers. So the way that I can explain this is the Wizard of Oz. So Dorothy um, was bored and lost her ability to travel. This is why when she ran away, she packed her bags and wanted to travel far, far away. 
but she didn't have the ability to use her spirit to go outside of her body. Her dog got into the garden of a reptilian wicked witch. And when Dorothy got angry at the wicked witch and said, I'll bite you myself, her Taurus field or her bio field or her spirit became entangled with reptilian. Now, when your Taurus field gets entangled with the reptilian, then we look at the word Tor, Taurus, Tornado, Dorothy. And this reflects that there was like a virus in the spirit world where we didn't know that if we got in touch with a reptilian, that they had the ability to trap us in a body and we lose our ability to speak to plants, animals, other people, spirit guides, and travel the cosmos. We, we were put into a prison under their dominance. And so Dorothy tried to find her way out of the power of the Wicked Witch of the West. And the Wicked Witch is always trying to take your shoes or your hat. And your hat is your halo. So you have the name Neo. And Neo had to follow the White Rabbit. And the White Rabbit reflects that you are awakening, that you are in a dual reality. And it is made up of this physical world. If you have a body you are considered male. It is, it is a reflection of all things physical. The invisible world is considered female and it is your trinity. So if this duality, your twin flame is male, all the things that you can see in this world, then our rescue from reptilians is the female and she represents magnetism. So Jesus and his 12 disciples is 13 the one needing his trinity. And Mary Magdalene, Magdalene reflects magnetism. The invisible world is female because it reflects magnetism. Your bio field is electrical. And then the invisible world is magnetism. So electromagnetism is speaking that what was stolen from us was our magnetism. And magnetism comes from the moon and the flood and many other things that limited our abilities to be part of a universal collective and be able to access all knowledge and all information and not feel so separated and alone. There may be also a communication about the green skin of the reptilian or the wicked witch that reflects the green letters of the matrix. So let's read your piece with the symbology shown. You were on a throne. The heart was broken. Your thoughts and your mind went over a rainbow bridge to a lion's gate. This is the sun and the god Ra or the god R from Armenia. And from there was put into a hat man that went into some sort of cube that looks like a dodecahedron and was put into a simulation where inside this cube there is a reflection or an emanation of our soul. And from there, we were sent down. So when we look at six o'clock, you're pouring out waters like the age of Aquarius into the color red. The bottom part of your biofield is considered red. It is considered like hell. And there's a clown with a red nose. We were put into an avatar. There's a holy grail being poured into someone else's holy grail. It's as if our soul was stolen. Our soul was poured into someone else's body. And there's a dragon. It seems as if there were dragons involved. There is a white square. If you look at the nine or 10 o'clock position and there's a tail on the square that went up your nose and there's symbols on your face. It's almost like there's some sort of nanotechnology that they put up your nose. I don't know. We were all like angels and oracles. We had the ability to communicate with all living things, rocks, water, animal, human. And maybe we were trapped because we tried to go into the body of a human that we thought was human and they weren't human. They were an avatar or a robot. And somehow when you go and access 
their energy and see through their eyes like an oracle, we were trapped. And when you do see through someone else's eyes as an oracle, it is easy to get trapped because you will get their memories, get their emotions, and there is no separation between you and them. You will have no memory of who you really are because all of your memories gets entangled in the memory of the person that you're seeing through. And that's what this this piece actually reflects. You went into the body of someone in the physical reality and your holy dove got trapped in their body. And it's almost impossible to convince ourselves we are not this avatar. We are not these memories. We are not these emotions. It's not true. Your female self is behind you with wedding bells, with the Trinity wedding bells. You have the number 13 and the number 33. And you have these clouds everywhere. And you're holding on to one of the number threes. You're the one who needs your Trinity. And it's quite literally telling you, if you want out of the matrix, the only way out is to find your Trinity. And your Trinity is your biofield. So if you look at the letter O with the rabbit here, that is one circle of your biofield. One circle represents the physical reality. The other circle was stolen by a fellow that's near your eye that looks like Yam. Yam is the god of the waters of chaos. He's the god of child sacrifice. Then you have Gog, Gog of Magog. These are evil people who eat people, tall giants. The land of Oz is the lower world, as the land of Iris is the goddess of the rainbow. It's the body of Osiris. You are seated on like a throne, like an Egyptian, and through this reptilian influence, this green color, they gave us food that wasn't good for us. I think they put something in our bread. They put something in the food. And the food went into our bodies and really um, sustained our consciousness behind these avatars so that we would be distracted by this world and never awaken to our fantastic ability to travel the entire co cosmos with our spirit. I couldn't be quite sure about this, but it's almost as if when the moon came or when a certain energy came on this reality and there wasn't as much gravity as there is now, they did something so that the gravity is so strong that there used to be floating cities and floating rocks. And if they made pyramids, it was very easy to make the pyramids because there wasn't as much gravity as there is now. It's almost as if after the flood, a large amount of gravity overtook us and we didn't have the ability to fly up because we were always pushed down. So Horus, the eye of Horus is connected to Osiris and Isis and you have that horse. On Neo, this is your power. When you are the one Neo and you're looking at the letters O-N-E or N-E-O, this is connected to um, the elemental tables. So you can look at your piece and go look at what does N-E mean in the elemental tables and begin to investigate the problem with being trapped in a, in a false reality. And the false reality is simply this avatar. The, the holographic, your eyes are, are, are holograms. To escape this body, we just follow the body of Christ, where we are the one who needs our trinity, which are the 13. And to be the number 13 is to not be tethered to time, 12 hours, 12 months, 12 zodiac signs. And to get to our higher self, we follow the letter M. And this is magnetism, and the letter M is the 13th letter in the alphabet. You have the letter M over your head. You have a body language that is an angel. You are being groomed to become an angel. You were quite literally sent down here in these bodies to defeat this body so that you can be an angel to help others out of the trap, but also to push those who are predatorial back into the trap as we see at three o'clock 
where someone is under the throne, trapped. The male should never be seated on the throne. The female is always on the throne because it is your spirit which had the ability to fly and see and know all things, which is the invisible world, which is magnetism, which is Mary Magdalene. She is always seated on the throne. Your trinity is a female. It's a divine marriage. So there seems to be a conquest with the god Yam to make the male, the physical body, dominate the spirit so that we could be in this reality and be ignorant. So this is quite literally telling you that the reason we fell was because the male dominated the female. The female is trapped inside a box below your throne and she needs to be released. So release Cinderella from her evil stepmother. Release the young girl tangled, trapped in a tower. Magdalene literally means tower. Mary Magdalene was mentioned 12 times in the Bible. That's a clock tower. And Fiona was rescued from a fire-breathing dragon in a tower. We can see the female trapped under the seat by a fire-breathing dragon in your peace. So you need to rescue your trinity from the tower. And the Holy One must be restored onto her throne, which is your third ring of power, which is your white rabbit, which is your trinity. Now we're going to look at what that looks like for those who didn't see it in the live and understand what your halo is, what your trinity is. When the Bible is filled with words that say man, 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 and male-dominated Bible, they're talking about the physical world. And this is inclusive of female bodies on earth. Because your physical body reflects male energy. And when we're talking about the seven spirits of God or the Holy Spirit, we're talking about magnetism and it's considered female. But it does not mean that she is a a woman anatomy that gives birth. It doesn't mean that at all. It means that the invisible ones are considered female. And the Holy One is a female that must be restored onto her throne because things were flipped upside down. Yah means moon, Shua means sun. If we were in the body of Christ, then Yah, the moon, the darkness of the moon, dominated the sun. And this means that we were ignorant. Ignorance dominated knowledge. Your higher self, your spirit has all knowledge and access to all knowledge. And so it has to be flipped around where the name Solomon is sun that dominates the moon, is a pole shift. And this pole shift is an electromagnetic shift. And this electromagnetic shift is magnetism dominates electricity. You might like to know that the cloud people are also considered masters and angels that are sent to this reality. They are called the masters of the seven rays. And the seven rays are the seven rays of the rainbow. Be aware that the name Shua is the ray of the sun. You are part of the seven rayed masters who come here to defeat this avatar. And so you're very close to figuring things out, which is probably why you got a reading from me. But let's read about the masters of the seven rays. The masters of the seven rays are those who have mastered their avatar or time and space. And they have followed the the disciplines of Christ or Buddha. And they have become one with the eternal light. These masters are called the ascended masters because they have reunited with God. And in a ritual of the ascension. The ascension is merely the acceleration of your vibratory rate of the electrons. So we're talking about electromagnetism again. When you get into electromagnetism, the ascended masters know that there are sounds that we in these avatars cannot hear. They are beyond our spectrum. And there are manifestations that we cannot see that are photographed 
and Curlian photography. We sense the presence of an aura, but we cannot see it with these holographic eyes. These avatars limit our ability to see and hear. Jesus was not the only son of God who ascended into the white fire core of the central sun or being. There have been many. They learned to follow a threefold flame of the Trinity within the heart, a real self who is the anointed one, the Christ and the Buddha, and the I am presence that Moses saw in a burning bush that burned but was not consumed. So the threefold flame that they're talking about is you needing your trinity. These ascended masters became authorities through their own disciplines and through following one of the rays of God. And they had become the Kohan or the Lord of that ray. They stand as the way showers or the teachers who show their disciples the path. Treat others as you would like to be treated. Things like that. The golden rule. Each of the seven rays is a fulfillment of the aspect of the Christ consciousness and that is ensouled by an ascended master who has graduated from the schoolrooms of earth. They teach that the crown chakra is the center of the mind of God. The throat chakra is the center of the will of God. So these kohans guide us in the ways of the seven rays, which is obvious to us because we live on seven continents, seven seas, seven days in a week, seven colors to the rainbow, seven chakras, seven wounds of Christ, and seven spirits of God, seven trumpets, seven seals, seven musical notes, seven heavens, seven generational curses of Cain. Each of these ray masters teach a certain lesson, like the master of the Serapis Bay teaches determination away from self-indulgence, being trapped behind the avatar and the flesh of self-fulfillment and gratification. The fifth ray is a ray master who teaches science, truth, healing, immaculate vision of God through the third eye chakra. So if you become a master of the seven rays, you will have a particular gift. There is a female ray, her name is Nada, or Lady Kohan, and she is a lawyer in defense of cosmic justice. She serves as as the Lord of the Sixth Ray, showing the way of Jesus, the way of humble service and ministration that adorns the talents of others with the rose of selflessness. She unlocks creative potential and... She is closely connected to water. Many religions revere water because nothing can exist without water. She represents life itself. And the goddess of water, her name is Ava, which is literally the letter M, which is the number 13. There's secrets of the seven rays that teach us. So they say that when you enter into the seven rays, you enter into the mother, and that's the letter M. And this mother is M-O, like Morpheus. But you as a seven ray student and master, um, our mastery is never finished, we're always learning, is teaching people to not get trapped by the male aspect of your avatar and learn how to release the female, the mother, and be able to hear God through certain chakras, and certain alignments through our actions, thoughts, and words. So the very first ray is El Moria. This is the word more, Morpheus. And they teach us that we have to be dedicated to the will of God, or you cannot be a discipline of the ray, a master of the ray of light. They will teach you to seek first the kingdom of God, not this physical reality. They will teach you to obey the invisible ones, the great mother, what you eat, what you do, what you say, who you hang out with. And there are serious communications about these teachings that can be ruthless. So although there is a golden rule, treat others as you would like to be treated, we don't fight flesh and blood. We fight principalities and powers, and there are some people dominated by this reptilian or archon energy and the masters will come to you and teach you how to defend yourself, block yourself and shift reality 
timeline shift and do many great things. So one of the things that El Moria teaches you is that the will of God is within you. And once you align to that will of God, your vibration excels and then you transform in something called the great crossing. Sorcerers call it the sorcerer's crossing. And to cross from this physical body into your eternal body is what we're here to do. This is why the white rabbit has like two towers. It's a crossing from the phallus of Osiris to Mary Magdalene. Magdalene being a tower. Magdalene means tower. So there is a real flame, a real jeweled love in El Moria. And it's connected to the Knights of the Round Table and the Holy Grail. The Holy Grail was brought to the Holy Land. And this is an allegory. Your Holy Grail is your union with your Trinity. The bottom of the Holy Grail is our very limited eyes of our physical eye, and the top of the Holy Grail is the eye of spirit. And the blood or the water within the Grail is your Trinity. We are all born with a ring of power. This ring of power doubles like an embryo through an awakening. The awakening forms the eye of Horus, or you can call it the eye of the needle or the eye of Ra. It is called being born again or twice born. It means that you have a physical self and an invisible self and you're beginning to awaken a little bit that there's more to this world. It also forms not only the eye of the needle or an eye, but it is the vesica piscis that looks like a boat. Now, this vesica piscis is one of the most important symbols that you will ever learn or know and it moves. So this is your biofield. Your biofield makes the letter M, W, the master that walks on water. The bottom part of your biofield is the physical world. It is the Wicked Witch of the West, the World Wide Web. It's the matrix. It is wattage. It's male electricity. The female or Emerald City or Auntie M, like Dorothy, is Mary Magdalene. It reflects the mother and it reflects magnetism. So this is electromagnetism. So the sun has a biofield and it flips its polarity every 11 years. And you are very connected to the sun. So this represents the earth. This, rep this represents the moon. This represents the earth. And there is a sun that is trying to create your third ring of power through a pole shift. So if the sun flips its magnetic polarity every 11 years, you're going to flip four times in your lifetime if you seek first the kingdom of God. This is the eye of the needle. The eye of the needle is an arc. The arc can only be entered two by two. You have to be born again. Your flesh is this body and your higher self is an animal. And it's like a holy spirit or a holy dove. So at first, you manifested on this earth through the baptism of water. The vesica piscis begins at the six o'clock position. You awoken in a body like a flood that is 75% water. So you're in an avatar that is mostly water. Ava means water. Ava means the goddess of water. And in this area, we are asleep. But as the sun begins to flip its magnetic polarity, you're gonna flip to the nine o'clock position where it looks like this. Now you're in the eye. Now you're in the boat. Now you're in the belly of the whale, Jonah, where you're balancing black and white. Now you are in very many different types of energies that reflect the age of Pisces and um, an awakening. Many people fight spirit here. It's a battle between flesh and blood. We get to know ourselves and God and the truth of a great many things at this precipice, but you're out of the water. You're on the boat out of the water. And for 40 days and 40 nights, you are trying to find the number eight. So the as the sun flips again the third time, you end up at the 12 o'clock position <clears throat> where the vesica piscis is pointed up as fire. Now this makes your number eight. 40 days and 40 nights. This means that spirit now dominates the flesh where we were, we came from a reality where the flesh dominated um, spirit. So this represents the moon. This represents the earth. 
And so when you find your number eight, this is the eighth flame. And so the story of Jesus is Jesus was not powerful when he was in the temple at 12 years old. He left the temple at 12 years old, meaning that he was not, he was going to a place where he was learning to not be tethered by 12 hours, 12 months, and 12 zodiac signs, or even our DNA that's very connected to the number 12. He was going to activate himself into his rainbow light body so that when he did return to the Bible, he found 12 disciples, which makes 13. 13 is you are the one who needs your Trinity, but we don't have a Trinity here. You have to have your Trinity in order to spin new worlds and new realities. So like an embryo, you will again grow from a dual reality to your third reality, which is your Trinity. So the three rings of power gives you the ability to become a master who has the ability to spin new worlds, new realities, and to manifest something new. And so this ring of power is the white rabbit that Neo needed to follow. He was the one who needed his Trinity. <clears throat> so there's the white rabbit. It is the white hair of Noah. It's the white hair of Noah that births out of the ark. Oops, spell ark backwards. And that is Hari Krishna. Hari Krishna is the white hair that births out of the ark. It is the Trinity. And the Trinity gives you a lot of power to awaken out of the matrix and to also do many things like defend yourself against the ones who are trying to take your third ring of power. Your third ring of power is your hat, Frosty the Snowman. Your third ring of power is your hat wizard who gets the rabbit out of the hat. Your third ring of power is your halo. And there are ones who want to take your halo because if they take your third ring of power, they will have the ability to spin a reality like a tornado and trap people in that reality. And that's exactly what happened. So here you are, the one who needs your Trinity. And we're gonna go to the number 14 because the number 14 is, is a divine number. It reflects that we our heart was broken. You have this broken heart in your piece. So the body of Osiris was broken into seven and seven. Seven for her, seven for him. And this makes the number 14. In order to bring our heart back together again, we have to find the number 14, and that's your fourth ring of power. The fourth ring of power is... Either this, or I, I always like to say it's this. Some people would say, that's how you create the flower of life. And I don't agree. I think you're looking for your cross. It should look like this. It's the baptism of water. It's the baptism of fire. And the infinity symbol is eternal life. This is your home. This is your olive branch. There is no place like home, your ability to create realities and homes, your ability to be back home with God and to do the will of God by becoming a ray of the seven masters of the seven seas, the seven continents, your seven chakras, the seven spirits of God, the seven wounds of Christ, and all of the number sevens, they must be transcended through the eighth gate, the lion's gate the eighth flame, and this eighth flame is 1111 or 88, like that. And that's why you're here. So that's a very good message for you guys. You are the one who needs your Trinity. The three wedding bells are the three rings of power that must be attained through self-sacrifice. It's called the deathless death. When you dream, you're no longer dreaming about yourself. You are now invisible. You can see through other people's eyes. But when you see through someone's eyes and they have anger, suicidal thoughts, they're drug addicted, they are perverted, and you feel like you are them, do not carbon copy their soul, their emotions, and their thoughts onto you. The mastery of knowing who you are is very important because once you go into someone's body, you can get stuck there forever because you will feel like you are feeling 
that you are them 100%. And that's what an oracle has the most difficult time overcoming. You have to know for a fact, I am nothing and yet everything. I'm no one and yet everyone. I am zero point energy. I am a reflection of the will of God and that's it. If I feel anger, if I feel depression, it may be something that I ate. It may be that I'm not transmuting my energy daily or it may be that I have connected my biofield with a reptilian or with someone who is very dark. And in order to get rid of that energy, I have to go and purify my, myself. The Essenes used to purify themselves in spring water every day because when you go underwater, you are not affected by frequencies that manipulate our minds. So they would go underwater every day. The number 33 reflects your 33 kundalini awakening and the deathless death. Jesus died at 33. And this number 33 is very important. You have the number 13 also. So if the sun flips its magnetic polarity every 11 years and you went through the water at 6 o'clock, you went through the fish or the boat floating at 9 o'clock, you went through the fire at 12 o'clock, where's the fourth flipping? The fourth flipping is the three o'clock position. And so if it flips four times, this is 44. For 40 days and 40 nights, 11, 11, 11, 11 is 44. When it flips to the three o'clock position here, it's your Trinity and it is 44. And it is connected to um, the boat, the ark, the Holy Grail, everything. This literally makes a Holy Grail. And this Holy Grail is the bottom eye is the eye of the physical. The top eye is the eye of spirit. And it is reuniting flesh and spirit in our eternal body, making that eternal crossing. This video went way longer than I expected. Usually when you pay for a reading, I just do 10 minute readings, but there was a lot involved here. And I feel strongly connected to Jonah as I think we are all learning to become an ascended master of the seven rays. But Jonah is connected to those cloud people and those cloud people in is... Um, a, a group of people who were part of God and then they were trapped in a reptilian body and they are asking to be set free. And that's what we're here to do, to set people who are in a trap free from lies. So the holy dove at 11 o'clock trying to fly out of an avatar is why you're here. But you can't fly out until you have your Mary Magdalene or the Great Mother and that is your Trinity. Thank you so much for your what your reading has to teach me and you and all of us here collectively. And if you would like a reading, you go to forestfairy.com. Although I just will remind you that the, the videos that I make for you are usually 10 minutes or more. They're not as long as this one, but this one was um, something that spirit really needed to bring forward for all of us here and needed me to jabber on and <laughs> speak about it in great length. I encourage you to study about the seven masters and the Ascended Masters, because the, you will connect with one of those masters to remember who you are. And who we are is simply a mirror of God. We are nothing and yet everything, no one and yet everyone. And the trap of getting trapped is usually self-importance and ignorance. And so we're awakening out of that, and we're doing it together. Big hugs for me to you.